Good morning, students. Today we are meeting again to discuss another chapter of class six in your science book. The name of the chapter is sorting materials into groups. Uh, it's very obvious that there are so many kinds of materials in our life. Materials, the things uh, of which different substances are made of. Like you see this one, this desk is made up of wood, this pen is made up of plastic, uh, my cloth, all are different materials. It may be metal, it may be wood, it may be plastic, it may be cotton. There are so many kinds of materials in our world that to study the nature of each of them we decide to classify them. Learn this word classification. Classification if you carefully look at this word you see it begins with the word you know class. In which class you are studying now? You are in class 6. Previous year you are in class 5. Next year, well, all the students in a school, they are grouped according to their age and their knowledge into different classes. So the students are classified according to their age or knowledge in the same way. In our home, you see, things are classified according to their uses. The things that we use to cook food, they are kept in the kitchen. Books, copies, etc. we keep in a separate place, they are made up of certain other elements. In the same way, according to the utility, some things are kept in the bathroom, some in the bedroom. Now, if you go through all the materials in the world to help study the nature, to make it easier for us, we group just like we divide you students into classes so that a certain age pupils and the pupils with certain level of knowledge can study together in the same way according to the uses according to the origins, we in different way classify all the materials in our life. And in this chapter, we will learn about a few ways of classification, different way, there are different way, different pattern of classifications, but we will learn some useful ones which we see in every day. Now, in the beginning, we classify according to the origin. This one you know. Classification according to the source of the material, from where we got that See, this one is made up of wood. Wood we get from the trees, from nature. But this one is made up of plastic. Plastic you cannot find in nature. It does not grow in nature. So, we have two basic sources of all the materials. One is sources. When we classify materials according to their sources, we have two groups. We have two groups. One is natural, and of course, the second is. You can yourself name some of the things we get from nature. We get wood from nature, we get all the uh, uh, cereals, crops from nature, we get water from nature, but we make plastic, we make special glasses. Glass there are, are maybe in the nature, but this special glass, this spectacle glass, it is made by 
human beings. We make cars, we make cycles, we make video plays. These are all man made. So, source of material can be up to nature and the laboratory of human beings. You see, one thing must be clear that many things can be made up of the same material and also same thing can be made up of different materials. Let me, let me give you some example. Let me give you an example for wood. Say wood is a material. The material is same. But we can make a table, we can make a desk, we can make a chair from the same material. Wood. Different things but the same material. In the same way, leather. Leather we get from the nature and then we uh, upgrade it from in our laboratory. It is the same material. But you can make a shoe of it, you can make your bed out of leather, your bag out of leather. In the same way, if you find paper, paper is a man made thing, same thing. But you can use it in the book, in your uh, pill book, in your copy book. So these are examples of the same material used to produce different types of uh, things. Opposite is also true. Suppose chair. Chair is a thing. You have yourself seen that chair can be made up of wood. Chair can be made up of plastic. Chair can also be made up of, uh, you see, uh, metal. A table, it may be of wood, may be of plastic, maybe even of glass. You have seen that this uh, shirt or any clothes, they are usually made up of cloth. But if you have seen the raincoat, it is made up of plastic. Same thing, but made up of defined materials. So, if you have learned up to this, why we classify and classifications can be made up according to different patterns before going to the uh, actual part of this class? Let us give you some slides of how different materials are used and different sources are used to get defined materials. Please look at that. What is classification? The process of grouping of objects based on some known properties, some properties common to certain types of objects. The process of grouping of objects based on some known properties is called classification. Why do we classify? We classify materials into different groups so that each kind of material can be used in the best possible way. Its utility increases. According to the source, objects are classified as natural and man-made. Here are some uh, classification naturally occurring objects like rock, petroleum, coal, silver, wood, and human made objects like soap, detergent, powder, uh, diesel, petrol, ornaments, etc. You will see that uh, you can find uh, uh, other examples also on your own. Now, there are different types of objects can be made of the same materials. Like you see, paper is the material, but you can make books, notebooks, newspaper, toys, etc. from uh, the same paper and plastics can be made into a bucket or toys etc like you see by leather we can make belt jacket shoes etc uh, we can uh, of wood we can make a chair we can make a plow we can make a wheel right and on the other hand we can make the same object from different materials. Like you see your pen can be of plastic, 
of metal, of wood. Your ornament can be also, also of plastic bangles, uh, of glass, gold, any other metal. Bats for the adult are made of wood, but bats for the children are made of plastic. And suppose table, it can be made of wood, uh, glass, plastic. Plates can be made of metal, of china, of plastic, thermocol, even plant leaves. So you see, different kinds of materials have different kind of uses. So, now that we know that how and why we classify different material to learn the actual characteristic of those things. Now we come to the actual part. What should we learn about these materials? We must learn about some basic characteristics of each material so that we can best use it, use it in this best way. Let me give you an example. The wood. Wood is a very nice, very durable, very uh, good to look at, very hard in its own way. We make tables, chairs, cores by wood. But why don't we make a cooking pot with crying? Why don't we make it with wood? Because the use of that cooking pot is for cooking which must be done on fire and wood does not have this property that if you put it in the fire it will not burn, it will burn. So wood has its utility, usability only in those types of works which does not involve fire. In the same way, we cannot make something that may be touched with an electricity in our daily use. Because that thing which conducts electricity, say, uh, any metal, it will give you a shock when you are working. That's why we have a plastic coating over the metal where you are seeing it. So that we can cut, touch it, catch it and work with it. Yet, the core inside it is metallic so that it can carry the electricity. So, we must learn about the properties of each kind of material so that we use it in the best way. That's why we classify it according to their property. What are the basic properties that we should know? Uh, let's, there are many ways of looking at it. But in this class, let us take some basic fundamental qualities by which we determine which material should be used to uh, what purpose. Number one, let us look by the looks, I say, uh, appearance.
Second point is how hard it is. You know this wood is hard, so is this pen and in a way this cloth. But there is a difference between hardness and durability. Durability, how long it will stay intact. And hardness, hardness is a defined level. Some things you can break down easily, always is hard. Like coal. It's hard, but you can break down easily. Wood. It's hard, but you can cut it without making too much effort. And also iron is hard. It can be cut. But it will take a lot more effort than you have to do by cutting down and wood. This hardness depends what kind of things you are using it for. For table, chair, etc. wood is alright. But when you make a bridge over the rivers, uh, across which every day lots of heavy vehicles like trucks, cars will pass from here and there. That bridge must be made durable with, say, at least of iron and materials like cement, concrete. It cannot be made up of wood. Wood, wooden bridge is only good for when the, uh, you are crossing over it by uh, foot. So this is hardness is one factor. In the same way, your cloth cannot be made up of hard material because it will dismount for you. So hardness is a part of the uh, that, that kind of property which determines what kind of use a certain material must be. Number three, whether this material you are using, they are soluble. If they are soluble in water or not, there will be other kind of solubility in alcohol, in ammonia, things you will learn in the upper classes. But the basic everyday thing is whether it is dissolving in the water or not. Say, you have made uh, a uh, pillar, a glass, uh, a cup, a glass, a pail to keep water. You make it out of ice. You think that the water will keep cool. But will it be usable? No, the ice will melt up or something. If you do anything uh, that dissolves in water, and it must be put in touch of water, it will dissolve. Can you make a sharbat, a sweet drink, by dissolving sugar in it? But can you, would you be able to do the same thing unless the sugar was soluble in water? So solubility, it is analog. So, Appearance, hardness, solubility. Now you see, this, how these properties of certain materials are determining to which part of they will be used. Another such Property is whether it is, it will be floating or sinking. Whether it will stay on the surface of the water or it will just sink down. You see, lot of things in our life. Like the boats. It must be made up of such a uh, material that it will help the boat to float on the water. On the opposite, the anchor in the boat, in the same boat. If the boat is like this, it must be made up of such material that it floats on the water. 
but it has an anchor to make it stay at one place. This must be made of iron because otherwise it will not go to the bottom of the water and stay into the soil. So portability and sinkability that is another part of the properties that we use for different purposes. One more such thing you learn, a new word also, transparency. You see, transparent, transparency, this word signifies if you can look through a certain material. This one, it is solid, this glass. But I am looking through it. The person who is running the camera he is looking through the glass. If this was made up of some other material through which we cannot see, uh, this pick would not have any use and this camera would not have any use if the lens was made. So this transparency. If you can look through the material, it has three parts. Transparency, this transparency has two sub-parts, actually we divide it into three ways. What is transparency? The thing is transparent when you can look through it from one side to another, like this glass. And there is another word called translucent. Translucent is semi transparent. You have seen some window glasses like that. You can, it's colored glasses. You cannot get it full picture of the outside, but you get a half picture. If you have put a paper and some oil, raw some oil on it, you will see that light comes from that side. You can see, but you cannot clearly see it from one side to another. Semi transparent is translucent. And the last one is opaque. Mind the spelling O P A Q U E opaque. Opaque means through which you cannot see. You cannot see from this side from that side. So naturally you understand. A speck, a window must be made up of transparent materials. Some windows should be made up of translucent materials. But usually the walls of a house are made up of open materials like bricks, etc. Because we need some privacy in our house. So these are another part. Now let us, we have prepared some slide to detail about these qualities and how they are used. Please look at them very carefully. Some fundamental properties of substances are like this. We classify them according to their appearance. Whether it has lustrosity, luster or it does not have luster, lustrous or non-lustrous. Luster is in Hindi chamak. If you make ornaments, you should make it from lustrous metals like gold, silver and also uh, from uh, lustrous uh, precious stones like diamonds etc. Second fundamental quality is hardness. Everything is hard in a sense that everything solid is a bit or more uh, hard but compressible sponge it is solid but it is compressible cotton wool it is compressible scratchable usually wood is more scratchable you can scratch your name on the wooden desk in your class third point is solubility if it is soluble solid if it is completely soluble in uh, water like sugar is soluble in water but sand is not and if a liquid, two liquids, they are soluble in each other, we call them miscible. Miscible is when two liquids 
are completely uh, dissolved in each other. And if two uh, liquids like oil and water, they are immiscible, they are insoluble, the water will float to the top. Fourth fundamental property is flotation. Whether it will float on the water or it will sink down. Like wooden planks are floatable. But iron anchor, it is sinkable. Transparency is whether we can see through a certain object. If like you see glass, eyeglass, spectacles, we can see through it. Translucent, you see a sunglass. It is colored glass. It is partly transparent. We call that translucent. Or it may be a brick, it may be a wood through which we cannot at all see. It we call opaque. See some objects according to different qualities. By appearance, by hardness, by solubility, and by floating or non-floating. Transparency, let's understand it a little more. Transparent objects are those objects through which we can see. The object which allow light to pass through them completely. They are called transparent, like air, like water, glass, polythene, etc. Translucent is other objects through which we can see partially, partly. Through these light can pass only in parts, partially. Like frosted glass, butter paper, sunglasses, all are translucent objects. And opaque objects through which we cannot see at all are called opaque objects. These objects do not allow light to pass through them. Metal, stone, wood, brick, etc. The properties you have learned up to eat. In science classes we call them physical properties. Physical properties and we differentiate it from the chemical properties. In the class you are now in, you don't need to differentiate so much. The upper classes as you go up towards in your studies, uh, your science will be branched into physics and chemistry. And the physical properties will be dealt with the physics class and chemical properties will be dealt in the chemical chemistry period. The properties you have just learned about, hardness, etc., they are physical properties. There are some chemical properties of each material. Uh, let us discuss them also. First is malleability. Malleability, you see. It is usually the metals that has like malleability. Non-metals usually don't have malleability. Malleability means when you beat upon a certain material, you go on beating it hard and harder. It does not break. It just spreads and become spread it farther and farther. Like you have seen, the iron meat, the low heart. They are building a piece of iron and making it flat. If it had beaten so much wood or say brick, those are hard substances also. But if you had beaten it with a hammer, the wood would splinter, the brick will turn into dust. But you don't beating a metal, lump of metal, like say uh, iron. It will just flatten with itself. This quality of metals is called malleability. And of course we use it, this quality, malleability of the metals to make it flat to, uh, uh, according to their uses. So malleability determines the use. The kind of uses that needs malleability, flat top. The body of your car, outside body of your car, it needs metal. It cannot be made up of wood because metals are malleable. It can be made into thin, flat by uh, building on it. And the second one is also belongs to the metal ductility. 
What is that? You take a plum of iron, copper, metal, hot. But through basin, I will show you by slide. It can be stretched further and further and further and it will be thinner and thinner. Like a thread like thin. It was a ball of metal. But the more we pull it on both sides, two machines of course, by force, it becomes thinner and thinner and longer and longer like a thread. This is the quality that we call ductility. This is a metal's quality and for that we use it in the to make electric wires. It needs a thinness. So this two quality property that it can be made thinner and longer like a thread. This is also metallic property. You cannot make wood, you cannot make glass like that. So this property is also used. Number three, combustibility. What is that? Combustibility, that it catches fire. Combustion point, you have seen that water. Water has no combustion. If you go on boiling water, water will turn into vapor, water, vapor, gas. But if you put some oil and go on heating it, after some time it will catch fire. So water was not combustible, it does not catch fire easily or never ever. Oil, it catches fire easily. So some materials are combustible, like wood, it catches fire, like coal, it catches fire, like oil, it catches fire, they are combustible, they have their own units. When in the winter, uh, it's very cold, we burn up some coals or wood, so that we can have some uh, hotness. In the same way, when we cook, we must keep the, it in our mind that we should not hot uh, go on heating the oil too much that it catches fire. In our uh, cars, in our engines, we use diesel or petrol because they are combustible. They can get burnt inside the machine, of course, that is internal combustion. But this combustibility, you understand, it's an quality that must be made use of. Certain things are combustible and they can be used for certain purpose. And conductivity. Whether it conducts electricity, actually heat can be conducted also, that is also part of conductivity. Because unless if you uh, put some uh, material kettle, say, kettle is made up of such a material, that it does not convey heat, that does not conduct heat to the uh, water inside. You are going on heating and heating there. Kettle is getting heated, but it does not conduct the heat inside. So heat conductivity is also necessary. But basically what we are telling that conductivity of electricity, because certain things must conduct electricity from the source to the appliance like TV, like computer, otherwise that machine will not so these five, four points, in the other ones you will see that these are also very much, very essential properties of all the materials. But here you must uh, look at the size we have prepared and get each point in your mind also. Right? Look. Here are some other properties, fundamental properties also, according to which we also classify and use the substances. Malleability. Substances such as gold, silver, zinc, copper, aluminium, in fact, most of the metals, which can be beaten with a hammer or with a, some machine pressed into thin sheets without breaking. It will not break, it will spread into a thin set. This property is called malleability and these kind of substances are called malleable. Second, ductility. Substances again like 
metal, silver, copper, gold, platinum, which can be drawn, it can be pulled on the both sides simultaneously so that it thins out into wear. Such substances are called ductile and this property is known as ductility. Another very essential property is combustibility. Some substances which burn easily, they, they catch fire very easily. These are called combustible substances and this property is known as combustibility. You know petrol, diesel, kerosene, wax, candle that is made up of, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, are all combustible materials and whereas sand, brick, marble, they are non-combustible. And another important property is conductivity, conductivity of both heat and electricity. Substances such as copper, aluminium, silver, platinum, most of the metals which allow heat and electricity to flow through them easily are called good conductors. And this property is known as conductivity. Substances which do not allow heat and electricity to flow through them are known as bad conductors like rubber, plastic, wood, etc. So students, uh, uh, this is a very important chapter. The, you have just learned the fundamentals of classification of materials. But as you go upward, you will see that these points what you have learned today will record again and again in your both in your physics period and in your chemistry period. So at least be sure that you have got the fundamentals right. So we will meet again very soon. Till then you stay strong, stay safe, stay home and stay studious and do your work. Right? Thank you.